everyone, Dave here again, and today I am building the SD Space Crater. This is a payload rocket specifically designed for lofting eggs for contest or just for the fun of it. Uh, like any of these kits, you want to make sure that you've got all of the parts. And I've already gone through this, so I'm not going to go through piece by piece here. And the numbers you see here are the, the masses of each part. And I just wrote those down as I went along in order to put this into rocket simulation software later on. This is a fairly easy kit to put together. Um, you will need a lot of model cement though. So unlike a lot of rocket models that rely mainly on white glue or wood glue, uh, this has a lot of plastic parts that need to be cemented together. And so some type of plastic cement will be useful for that. Um, for this one, I'm going to use the, the thicker type here. Um, if you have the thinner type, that will work too for most of the plastic to plastic bonding. But there are a few cases where we need to bond plastic to cardboard. And for that, you'll either want the thicker glue like this, or you'll want some super glue. We will need a little bit of white or wood glue to do the shock cord, but that's about it. Okay, so um, the first thing they have us do here is to attach the launch lug assemblies. And these look like this guy here. But what I am actually going to do first is I'm going to set that aside. And if we move ahead here, the second major assembly here is the fin can. It comes in two pieces here. And I like to assemble these first. Um, now, with the uh, fin placement on this, it's not as critical. In some of these types of models, they'll have um, fin slots at the seams. And it's usually more common if the model has four fins. This one only has three, so we don't have them add a fin. But I like to give the whole can time to completely dry before I put the fins on. And it just helps keep the, the seams from splitting as you're handling and putting pressure on this. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do then is find where I buried my glue. Okay, and ooh, it's a little bit runny there. There we go. And I'm just going to run a very thin bead here. Um, be especially careful on those threads because we don't want to gum those up. And you don't want to get this too thick because we don't want the glue to be squeezing out all over the place. Um, hit each one of those pegs. I'm just going to put this together like so. Alright, I've got a little bit of glue squeezing out there. Um, you can take a tissue or something and wipe that if you do it really quickly. Uh, if you wait too long, you'll get smears in the plastic. So I did a little bit there, it's not too noticeable. However, if you let's see if we my camera will focus today. Come on, focus. All right, you can see I got a little bit in the threads there, and that I do want to try and wipe off. So I use a tissue in my thumbnail here. Um, because if we have too much excess glue there, it will interfere with the engine retainer cap, which is right here. And I'm going to do this really quickly. I'm going to put this on and then take that off. And what that's done is knock down any glue that was up too high in there. All right, but I'm going to leave this off while it's drying. So I'm going to set that aside. And while that's drying, now we can put the launch lugs on. For this next part, we need to mark our body tube 
and for this we need one mark at two inches or about 5.1 centimeters and another one at six inches or 15.2 centimeters from the base of the tube. So I'm just going to flip this around here. Okay, and we'll have one mark here. These don't need to be very large or very dark. And one mark here. Now these um, launch lug assemblies here consist of a ring, a standoff, and the actual launch lug. And they're tapered, so they, they taper inward at one side, and this should face forward. And that's not entirely clear in the instructions here. Okay, it looks like they're facing forward, but they're also shoving them on from the aft end. And I recommend that you don't do that. And you'll see here why in just a minute. So I'm going to slide this on. I'm going to slide this on from the back. Okay. The, the way they're showing this is that it seems like they want you to put the glue in and then slide these up. All right. Now, you don't. if you do that straight, that's going to work um, because first of all this one you'll slide up through the back ring of glue and then into the front ring and you have glue all over the place. So what I recommend is go ahead and dry fit these on and then move them a little bit beyond each of our marks there. And then use that as a guide so you're going to run glue just below each of these rings and then once that's in, you can slide this into place to your mark. And then you can do the same thing down below here. You'll glue right around, slide this into the glue and into your mark. And then once your glue has been, or your rings are positioned in the groove, then you, uh, glue, cannot talk. Um, then you'll want to look down the length of the tube looking through the two launch lugs and making sure that everything is aligned straight. And then once that's done, you can set this aside to dry. Okay. So for this part, you can use either the thick model glue, like this, um, or you can use the gel type cyanoacrylate or super glue. Again, you don't need much here. My glue is actually coming out a lot faster than I'd prefer. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just kind of letting this run down a little bit. There's my mark. So I'm just going to put this in. I'm going to get a little bit of a twist. Um, and what this will do is form a fillet of that model cement against the back side here. If we have it fairly even, that's a little bit of a gap there, but that's okay. It will still work. Now we want to do both of these in rapid succession so that one does not lock into place too soon. Again, there's my mark. So I'm going to bring this in. Okay, now one of the things you can do to align these is get yourself a flat surface and then just lay this down and move both of those launch lugs until they come in contact. And now what I'm going to do is just roll the whole thing to the right just a little bit. Now if I bring this up and sight along it, they're nice and aligned. Okay, so now I'm just going to take that and set it aside. 
to finish drying. My fin can is cured for about 10 minutes now. And so our next part will be to attach the fins. And these are mostly elliptical and we've got a little bit of a kind of a four fin if you like here. That should face toward the forward end of the rocket. The threaded part will be at the aft end. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go through here and dry fit these and make sure that there aren't any surprises. Okay, so those all go together well. And actually, you can get away with not even gluing these things in because when the engine retainer's on here, that also locks those fins there. Right. But just for added strength, and because they recommend it in the instructions, I'm going to go ahead and glue these in. Okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit along here. So these are going to contact the fins on the inside edges here. And then also in this front portion, I'm only going to bring it up about halfway though. And then the fin, when I put it in there, will slide up through that glue and that will spread it evenly. And I'm just going to do this again. actually got a little bit of excess on it. And again, you got to be careful doing this part because the cement is actually partially melting and dissolving the plastic. And so you do you run the risk of ruining the finish there. You won't have the gloss anymore. Um, but I prefer that over big lumps of cement there. An alternative, whoa, that's a big glob. An alternative to this um, is you can use a toothpick to spread it, first of all. I'm being kind of lazy here, paying the consequences for it. Uh, you can also use a thinner brush on type cement that gives you more control, but often you have to put it on in more than one layer because it tends to evaporate really quickly. From a technical point of view, that's probably the hardest part of the whole rocket there, is just getting nice, even amounts of glue on the fins. Okay, and then my launch lug here. Both of them are, are in place. The glue is not fully cured, but it's enough as long as I don't bonk it on something, it should be fine. <clears throat> now here, the instructions say to use... Um, plastic cement in here as well. I'm going to go ahead for this part and use the, the gelled cyanoacrylate or super glue. Because I've just found it works better when I have to bond plastic to cardboard. So I'm going to use a fairly generous amount inside the tube here. And any excess will be pushed forward and it won't come out onto the fin can here. Now, the main thing you need to do is make sure that when you put this in, that at the final resting place for it, that the launch lugs are in between the fins. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that's all lined up there again, and it is. Okay, give it one more shot before the glue sets. Yes, that is nicely aligned. Okay, and at this point I can go ahead if you want and put the retainer on. They show that in the instructions. Um, don't really need to at this point because all the glue is in place. And in fact, I want to make sure that my glue is completely set before I put this on permanently. So I'm going to set that aside again. I'm going to put the rocket aside for a moment. For the shock cord mount, we simply cut out this little trapezoidal piece 
If you don't want to destroy your instructions, you can either photocopy this, or you can just cut one out of scrap paper of the same length. Okay, and so what you can do here is just pre-fold this so that it's creased at each of those lines. And now you will need wood glue or um, white glue here. And I'm going to put a, a run of glue here in the middle and kind of smear that all around. It doesn't need to be really heavy, but you do want an even amount of glue over that whole thing. And now we're going to take the shock cord here. And I'm going to place it a little bit of a diagonal. Uh, and the reason I do this is so that as we fold this, the, the rubber is not stacked uh, immediately upon itself. And this makes it a little flatter. And so now what I'm going to do is just squish that down squish all the glue around, try and get all the air out of it so that we have glue all throughout. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to fold this and this is where that, that diagonal comes into play because now the, the piece of the, the rubber elastic band here is beside the other edge here. All right, again, I'm going to squish that all out. So the glue is all over it, nice and even. Okay, and now I'm going to bend this a bit so that I put a curve into it, like that. And this is going to slide into the body tube. Now according to the instructions, this needs to go in at least an inch and a half. Uh, and I prefer to get it in just as far as I can get it because what this will do, the further down I can get this into the body tube, the less chance I'm going to have of the shock cord and the parachute interfering with the nose cone shoulder that's going to go in here. So now I'm going to put a layer of glue on my shock cord mount. And it's actually best to do this while the inner, the inside glue here is still wet because you want this to be nice and flexible. And so now I'm just going to slide this in and try not to touch the edges to begin with. And I'm going to get that down as far as I can there. Let's see you can see how we see that well. Uh, get that down as far as I can with my longest finger and now holding the back side with my other hand I am pressing on the inside of this and getting that mount completely up against the inside wall of the body tube and squishing all that glue evenly within it. So that's actually much more than an inch and a half down, which is where I want it. Now I'm going to set this aside again. And our last assembly is the nose cone payload section here. Now mine actually came with this all assembled and then I took it apart again so that I could weigh all the components for simulation software. Um, so if yours is uh, unassembled, we have the two nose cone pieces and then these are little silicone rubber padding pieces that are shaped to hold an egg. And so the one without the window in it goes in the bottom. You just have to squish that in place. Um, there are some little insets in here. You just want to put those in between. And actually, it looks like if we turn this, yep. 
Okay, so some of these little prongs are shorter and they are meant to go over the locking tabs here. And that's going to hold it in place more uniformly. And then the, the piece with the window in it here, this is going to go in the top. And that window goes in this widest area here. So that's just going to slide down like that. And again, the little spokes of the padding the longer ones go in between the tabs, the shorter ones go up against the locking tabs there. And then this whole thing comes together. So you just have to line up the side each other, and then this just twists into lock. Okay, and you just want to make sure that everything is in there straight. Um, if there's a gap here between the two pads, that's fine. Um, that's actually meant to be there if you've got a little bit taller egg. These can squish around if they need to be, but they don't have to be exactly meeting each other. Okay, so here you just want to give a good yank on that and make sure it is locked in place. And then all we have left to do now is to attach the shock cord to this. And this is simply a matter of tying a couple of half hitches onto it. A little bit of excess cord on the other end of the knot here, but don't waste it. Okay, so I'm tying that nice and tight, and then changing directions um, so that it's being stretched in the way that it normally will. Now I've got a little bit of excess cord here. I don't want it where it is because as long as it is there, uh, it could run in. Uh, it could get itself caught in between the body tube and the nose cone shoulder and prevent it from ejecting. ejecting. So I'm just going to cut that off. Now I'm not going to cut the whole thing off. I'm going to cut about a half of that length. Because I want some to keep extending out beyond the knot so it doesn't get itself pulled inside. And then I'm just going to take a little drop of my all-purpose glue here. And I'm just going to work that into the knot. And this will just help keep the knot from coming unraveled. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let that glue dry a little bit and we'll work on the parachute and then we'll be done. So our last piece to assemble here is the parachute. And this is a 16 inch diameter parachute measured corner to corner. And this is something that you'll want to consider here. This parachute is meant for if you are actually lofting an egg. If you're going to fly this rocket um, without a payload in it, just flying it by itself, you may want to consider using a smaller parachute. And for that reason, I suggest that you don't do this the way the instructions tell you to because this is going to at least semi-permanently attach the parachute to the nose cone here. Now you can do this and all they're doing is taking all these shroud lines and you simply pull them each direction until you get even parachute corners there. Okay, And then you just temp simply take the other end, keep it taut and make a loop here. And then that loop goes through the eye of the nose cone there. Okay, and then you have to make sure you get everything back in a loop again. And if you notice here, any time I change hands or change loops, I'm always holding on to some other part of the shroud line so I don't change their lengths. Okay, and so then you just pull this through. Here's where it starts to get complicated. So I'm going to put my hand through this, hold these shroud lines again, and then we simply pass the parachute through this loop that I've got in my hands, or you can pass the nose cone through. Now since I've already attached my nose cone to the shock cord, if I do this I have to pass the whole rocket through. 
and the reason, you know, and so they actually have you do this in the instructions before the shock cord for this reason. Okay, but I had never intended to do it that way. Instead, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to refine my loops first of all. Okay, so I've got all my shroud lines again. I can go through, I've got them all tangled up. So if you get yours all tangled up, just set them out again. And so there's one, two that's in the middle, three on the side here. And now I'm just going to gather it up on the middle of the parachute once more. And on my other hand, I've got my finger on the loops. And now I'm just going to adjust those a little bit. So that once again, all of the corners where the lines are attached are pretty much even. Okay, I'm going to gather this once more, keeping my shroud lines the same length. And now I'm going to use a fishing snap swivel. I'm just going to pass the loop through the swivel end. And bring that through just enough to get some clearance here. I'm going to open my loop again. And now I'm going to pass the whole swivel through like that, and then I'm going to bring the loops down and pull that taut, and there we've got a nice knot at the base of the snap school there, and if we have to, you can untie this relatively easily. But the good thing about this is now we can just open up the snap part, attach that to the nose cone, I'm going to move my shock cord over just a little bit, and snap that on. And this gives us now two benefits. One is the one I just showed you. You can change out parachutes really easily. So as I said, if, if you leave this one on and you launch this without the egg in it, it's going to take a very long time to come down where it might get blown away by the wind and such. And so I would recommend if you're going to fly this without the payload that you fly it with a 12-inch parachute. The other thing this does is no matter how careful you are, you always end up with a little bit of unevenness in the parachute. This causes the parachute to twist, and by having this swivel in there, you'll have less twisting of the shroud lines and less chance of knotting it up. Okay, so structurally our rocket is done. Now we do still have a nice little uh, set of stick-on decals here. And so when we come back, I'll have put these on, and we'll see the completed rocket. Here's my completed rocket. The total construction time, even with the, the waiting periods to allow the glue to set, was just about an hour. Now, I would wait another hour at least before you try flying this and make sure that all of the glue sets up well. Uh, especially the shock cord. In fact, you might even want to let that go for another two hours to make that shock cord mount as strong as possible. Uh, that's, if anything fails on this, it's probably going to be that shock cord mount. Um, so give it time to dry. Overnight's even better, but if you're just in a real hurry, give it at least two hours so you don't end up separating at the shock cord. All right. This was a, a fun build. Um, Something I like actually is just because I'm an experienced rocketeer doesn't mean that every kit has to be really grueling and time consuming and detailed. I actually like building these things, uh, in part because I hate painting, and these are already nicely colored for me. So I hope you did just as well with yours, and have a good flight.